What's up? It's Vegan Jimmy Neutron, Velma, whatever you want to call me. And I'm here to talk about a bit more tech and media today. You know, I was told when I was pretty young, uh, I'd never believe that there's there's such thing as a free lunch. And essentially what that meant was nothing in life really is free. And there's often, you know, hidden costs, even if it's not very clear what those are costs would be up front. What if I told you, though, the lunch was going to cost you $50 billion? Okay, let me explain. Um, we've had a lot of developments, at least on the discussion front of AI and its process. So let's talk about artificial general intelligence and what that looks like, because there's one company that is spearheading the project. And you guessed it, it's OpenAI. So don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Hey guys, I'm V. Dries, and I have a master's degree in educational technology and new media. And most recently, Sam Altman, co-founder of OpenAI and various other accolades, recently has done a discussion with Stanford's eCorner. And a lot of content has come out of that. And media has grappled its hooks into a lot of these statements. And I wanted to discuss a few of those today. I think this is a really big discussion that's worth having about the future of AI and how us humans will be interacting acting, leveraging it to learn, and so much more. For the consumers who maybe don't have a really good grasp on AI, um, it's just artificial intelligence and it's in everything from your, you know, smartphones, right? To, to your laptops, to a lot of the technology we, we use to date, like digital cameras even. We commonly use it in LLMs, which are large language models. One of the most prolific influencers of research and development of AI, Sam Altman, has recently stated some pretty big facts. I thought a good place to start with, with this is it's actually talking about OpenAI's plan. And again, I'm just pulling this from OpenAI. Open AI statement. So this is their mission and vision. And this was published back in February. Um, I know everyone's talking most recently about the conversation that took place on Stanford just this week. So I know that's pretty fresh, but I want to let you all know that while these notions of AGI might sound pretty scary, um, if you're just hearing about, about the physical and actionable timeline for the first time, um, I will let you know that this has been thought about for a while and a lot of big brains um, are, are getting together to make this possible. So what is AGI? Well, it's artificial general intelligence. So let's quickly just talk about that crux, right? Like what is AGI? What's the plan? Well, AGI has the potential to give everyone incredible new capabilities, says OpenAI, uh, and they can imagine a world where all of us have access to help with almost any cognitive task. That's right, processing, the creation, all can be assisted with AI. Simply put, that's the future, right, is finding technology and wielding it to make humans' lives better. That should be the ultimate North Star. And in application, right, artificial general intelligence will help bolster the human ingenuity and creativity all in one fell swoop. This would be a type of intelligence that is ultimately powerful, obviously, but it would be a technology that would help a lot of people. And it's also a technology that has capabilities to revolutionize our society as we know it and as we function inside of it. And I'm talking about a global scale. These cognitive tasks can include creative ones, right? Abstract thinking. Ideally, this is AGI. It has common sense, a comprehension of cause and effect and all of that. But with that does come pretty serious ability to misuse this type of technology. And I think that is where a lot of the fear and discussion is surrounding Sam Altman's most recent remarks at the conference. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it was, but it was conducted by the Stanford eCorner. And there's an entire discussion that I will link in the description below. It's about 45 minutes and it's it's pretty in depth, but a lot of little mini clips have been clipped and shipped. So as AGI is continuously being explored by OpenAI and I'm sure other other companies as well, the cost um, of, of AGI is becoming more in the discourse, right? What does misuse really look like? What is the catastrophic outcomes? What are the utopian prospects that maybe some people are um, idealizing? And then obviously we have the financial cost of it all as well. The last time I checked, literally money doesn't grow on trees. So where, where where's all this coming from, right? Well, apparently it's going to cost a lot of money. Um, so much money, in fact, that this is the first kind of thing that the internet is, is taking issue with. And, and probably rightfully so, the economy is not in a great place. So when we're talking about an exorbitant amount of funds uh, being spent on R&D for, you know, something that maybe not everyone will have access to, um, it does kind of make it a bit less digestible, I guess, for, for your mainstream audience hearing these figures. So um, let, let's hear the figures out of the horse's mouth, so to speak. 500 million a year or 5 billion or 50 billion a year. I don't care. I genuinely don't. As long as we can... I think stay on a trajectory where eventually we create way more value for 
society than that. And as long as we can figure out a way to pay the bills, like we're making AGI. It's going to be expensive. It's totally worth it. Right. OK. Burning? Yeah. Um, it's going to be expensive and it's going to be worth it. That's the sentiment coming out of Sam Altman, uh, open AI, you know, co-founder. Now, I'm taking issue just from a from a business perspective. If you're burning through, as long as you make the money back, that's how we're paying the bills. So that that sort of cycle of logic kind of fell apart for me. But um, I get where he's he's saying morally, you know, if we're able if we're able to leverage this technology to make the world a better place, that is immeasurable, whether that is in finances or, you know, otherwise. Right. So that that's the first grievance, I guess, is just the ultimate cost and benefit analysis here for AGI versus is what we already have, which is access to a lot of LLMs that have already really bridged the gap for many people, making a lot more tasks efficient, accessible, and, and streamlined, right? Which brings me to the next kind of clip that went viral um, on, on X, which is this one, where he's discussing how dumb GPT-4 and these LLMs are actually compared uh, to what he might be seeing in R&D and other sort of uh, trials. And this quote's been making a lot of people uneasy. I mean, that is kind of spoopy. Here it is. GPT-4 is the dumbest model any of you will ever, ever have to use again by a lot. GPT-4. Okay, is the I mean, so that's kind of scary. A lot, again, like I was saying, a lot of people use LLMs already. Um, you know, just imagine we got GPT-4 last year. So much has developed since then. So many processes have become possible because of this technology. Um, and, and if it's really going to be, you know, a promise made uh, to people, I, I can't even begin to truly envision that utopia, right? A lot of people talk about the abundancy that it'll create. Um, a lot of people discuss the jobs that it will destroy. Um, and, and, and sort of rectifying those two things is something that we're going to have to grapple with as society, as learners, as consumers moving into this space. Here's another question. I, I, I do want to start wrapping this video up pretty quickly here. Um, what did we expect of, of, you know, research and development teams at AI companies? I'm just not sure how impactful it's all going to be. And again, we can talk catastrophic moments, maybe in another video, um, catastrophic ideas of what could happen. We could also do a utopian style video um, about all of the all of the uh, prospects that people have concocted um, in, in their own in their own ideas of what this could look like as far as AGI being applied uh, to our daily workflows. There were also a lot of people online that uh, that saw this this discussion, this conversation and just didn't really believe a word of what he was saying uh, with how he was going to finance this, what it was going to look like. And again, the abundance and, and the resource that it AGI could give. Um, a lot of people just weren't buying it. So what do you guys think about AGI? I know we're in the preliminary discussions trying to figure out processes for how that might be, you know, brought to consumers. But again, earlier this year, Altman did ask for investors. I believe they were looking to get investments up to at 7 million, uh, 7 trillion, excuse me. And they were looking to reshape the business of chips and AI. Um, and if you know, you know, a lot about the technical process regarding AI, if AGI is in a close, close distance here, um, it's going to be really important that that get hammered out. So did that happen? I have to do some more research, but this is just sort of my my knee jerks on how the media is in interpreting AGI. So again, just to recap, Sam Altman did a 45 minute, you know, conversation with Stanford, and I want to link that below. Um, and in it, it discusses a lot of the financial prospects, the societal implications, and a lot of people are talking about it. So you should know about it and go watch it, get informed. And uh, yeah, don't forget to drop your thoughts below about how you guys see AGI, you know, being integrated into society. Um, what are some of the catastrophe moments that could come out of it and what are some of the more utopian ideas that maybe could could follow AGI I like to take in all considerations and I love thinking about this stuff so don't disappoint me drop your comments below I'm out of here bye